thank the people in the garden and uh, all the people from the Boston Tip-Off Classic for uh, allowing us to participate in this event. I think it's a great event and uh, great for college basketball, a great way to celebrate college basketball in uh, you know, the greatest city in the world. So um, it was special for, uh, for our fans and our players to get the opportunity to come down uh, this afternoon and uh, play in such a special venue. Unfortunately, we didn't get the result we were looking for. Uh, I thought Drexel played a tremendous basketball game, um, particularly uh, Chris Fouch. Um, you know, he just made big shot after big shot, and uh, he, you know he had a tremendous afternoon. And uh, we set out with a couple of goals to play hard for 40 minutes, and play together for 40 minutes, and, um, and have a more concentrated effort on the backboard that's been a little bit of Achilles heels for us over the last few games and I thought we did those things. Fortunately we just got beat by um, you know a, a terrific college basketball player in Chris Fouch. Questions? How much tougher is the loss in light of the fact you did all of those things that you had set out to do? That's gotta make it a little tough. It'd be one thing if you didn't do it, I imagine it's a little bit tougher than that. Yeah, well we, we, we made some mental mistakes and we're, we're a young club so you know that's that's the, the next growth opportunity for us. And it, it, it's a journey for us. We know it's not going to happen overnight, but we're hoping that we're playing our best basketball in, in January and February. And, you know, in November and December, we're learning. Uh, and I thought I thought uh, we've gotten better in a lot of areas. We've played in some, some difficult venues to this point. And uh, each one of those uh, opportunities have made us a better basketball team. Uh, today, we missed a couple assignments. There were some young mistakes. Uh, made out there, particularly on the defensive end, and some lack of execution a little bit at times. Um, but you, you got to tip your hat to, to, to Drexel. They're a tremendous basketball team. I think they're playing great. Um, and, and, uh, you know, they're a tough opponent. They're, they're stingy on defense and great on the back boards. Bill, uh, it seems like in that second half there was a stretch where you were getting stops. Yeah. Uh, you're turning them over, you're getting stops, and yet you weren't getting rewarded on the offensive end. How frustrating was that? Chase, maybe could you speak to that as well? Yeah, I thought we had some good looks. Uh, you know, I thought, we, you know, we got the ball in, in around the basket. It was a physical game, and we missed some shots that we probably should have made. Uh, but that, you know, that that's what league play is all about. You have to tough it out, and you have to find a way to get that loose ball. And, uh, there was one play, I was, Alex Harris had a tip on the ball, and we thought we had it, thought we had it going the other way. And, it scored it out and turned into a three-point play for them, uh, and that's that's what it is. You gotta. That's how close and the, the, the small the difference is between winning and losing. You know, you gotta get that loose ball. You gotta get that rebound. You gotta make that shot. And you know, I thought Drexel did that a little better than we did this afternoon. Chase, maybe uh, just what what your feeling was at that point too, when you guys were fighting so hard to get back into it. To, Claw your way back. Yeah, it was tough. Uh, getting those turnovers, you like to see it uh, turn to turn into points on the other end, but unfortunately, it didn't. Uh, we kept playing hard, and uh, that's how we can ask. It seems like there was uh, also a stretch where, on the offensive end, uh, struggling from the perimeter. I mean, uncharacteristic to see Joel hit and miss. You know, the rim. You know, kind of yours hit short on the. Did the environment, the building, have anything to do with it too? I mean, is it, is it a little depth perception issue? Or? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, usually those shots go down. Uh, come out next game, I'm sure they'll go down. Uh, really, really can't speak on I thought there was one play, uh, Joel stepped to the line, but he realized at that point he was at the NBA line. He had a great look at the, at the rim, it was wide open. And he thought the better of it, took one more dribble, kind of got himself out of rhythm, and took the shot. And, you know, you, know you, you, you caution your players about that when they come into the building against the college line. But I thought at that time, Joe, you know, overthought the play. And uh, he was open. If, you know, even if he shot from there, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But that, that, that line kind of factored into it. Chase, you had, you had one three-pointer that seemed to answer Fouts a little bit. Um, were you hoping that would be the spark that would get your team going? Uh, yeah. When you kind of get the offensive rebound, you step back and shot it. Uh, yeah, it was a spark. Uh, I remember hitting it, I think it became 54 and 57 or something like that. And then the next couple of possessions down, we couldn't get those easy baskets to go in. We had uh, chances underneath the goal, and uh, they just 
Wu fall. Ryan Pearson looks like he's been getting better the last couple of games, but he hasn't been out there late in the game. Can you just talk about that a little bit? Well, we've been down. So a lot, a lot of stuff we go to a little bit more of a full court pressure situation uh, where we're trying to either get a trap or get a stale or, or something like that. So we're trying to get either a smaller lineup or a quicker lineup. Out there. Um, I think that's been the case. But I'm, I, I couldn't be happier with his development, how he's come along. And you knew it was just a matter of time him getting comfortable and, and so on. But, uh, you know, that's what experience is. He's, he's getting better each and every day. He's a terrific young man. He's, he works really, really hard. And, you know, I think you're going to see more days like today uh, out of Ryan Pearson in the future. Chase, uh, you, you guys went through a similar kind of stretch a year ago. Why you guys kind of reeled yourselves in? Is this analogous to what I mean? What you're going through now, analogous to that, and what do you think it's going to take to kind of snap you guys out of this you know, four-game slump you were in? Uh, yeah, it's very similar to last year. Last year we started out two and seven, and we got with guys in the group and uh, decided we were going to set up one defense and then carry this through the season. Uh, this year, I feel like we're growing as a team. Uh, Last year we had some experienced guys, but uh, this year uh, we're fighting through our battles. Uh, these close games are going to come up in the end and turn into victory. So uh, I'm not too worried about it, but I feel like we're coming together as a group. And, and, and part of that, too, Mike, is, is a function of who you play. Uh, you know, I, I didn't uh, do these guys any favors by taking them out to Utah State or putting them at Providence or playing Siena or, you know, uh, you know, in those early games, you know, a lot of teams are trying to build some confidence. Um, you know, I think, you know, players like Chase, they, they, they like to go out and compete against the best. Um, so we put them in an environment knowing that we might take some losses early on, but it, it's going to pay dividends later on during the season and as we get deeper into conference play. But, uh, you know, I think sometimes it doesn't matter how good you are, it matters how good they are. And we, we play some of the best competition around. As far as this being the opener, I mean, uh, obviously you put your team through a tough test. Were you hoping they would profit from that experience? Of Absolutely, and that's, that's what it is. I think, you, you know, if you're a player, you want to play in those, those, those type of uh, contests where, where you're challenged and, and there's a huge challenge in front of you. And I know Chase is that way, and he's been that way since he's, he's come on campus at Northeast. He's, he's always accepted the challenge, and, um, you know, he's doing an outstanding job at moving this young group along and making sure that they keep their head up and uh, you know, you know, are developing as we go deeper in the season. How much does Alwyn make me still suffering from the effects of a couple of injuries he's had? He's, he's been really nicked up. And, uh, and you know, he's, he's, he's a warrior. You know, he wants to compete. He wants to contribute. Um, unfortunately, you know, his, his body at this point is, uh, is tall, he's less than 100%. And so, um, for those of you who have seen Alwyn Bigby last year and remember how uh, ferocious he can be on the defensive end, uh, he's just not there right now. And uh, we're hoping that uh, maybe exams can kind of settle him down and <coughs> back, back to being the, the defensive stop and that he's been so, he's played that role so well for us. Do you think the break that you're going to have after the game on Wednesday is going to definitely help him out then? It'll just yeah, time, time, time heals all wounds, right? You, know, you, gotta, you need some time away and some things on what you he definitely wanted to play in today's game and wanted to compete and, and uh, you know, help the team in any way he could. He's just, he's just not 100%. Right Maybe a word about Fouch. You kind of talked about him, but is he one of those guys that at the end of the season may be one of you know, the better guards in this conference? Uh, I know you've got, you've got one in Yeah, he's a tremendous player. And, 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 you know, you have to admire a kid who's kind of accepted his role coming off the bench. Yeah. And being their lead scorer, a little two guys, made big shots, big plays. Um, it just tells you that he, you know, he's an ultimate team guy. Even though he's a scorer, a lot of guys equate that being a little bit, you, you, you know, maybe selfish and so on. But he, he's not all. He's accepted his role. He, he uh, does it as well as anybody in the league. Um, and, he, and he just steps up and makes big shot after big shot, um, night after night. So he's a tremendous player, and I, I think he's. Uh, He's off to an outstanding career. Any further questions? All right. Thank you again. Thanks. Thanks.